This week on Live Bait, we introduce you to the art of fishing with a true craftsman's touch. We will visit a longtime bait fish farm in Paragould, Arkansas, Pillow Fish Farm, and meet some great folks who provide great bait all over the country. And we show you how to keep your bait healthy and hearty. Welcome to this episode of Live Bait. Jim, I feel like I'm in a museum honoring everything that we love. <laughs> right on top like that. And there's our Palomar or not. I think I do not want to let that one go. Healthy, hearty, and safe certified Arkansas bait fish. Let's start off with one of our favorite segments on this show, First Fish. Each week we take someone who has never caught a fish out to go fishing for their first. Now this week we've got someone who has traveled the world, had a very successful career and family, but has yet to punch fish on his life's bingo card. And he's about to punch it more than once. We've got Bob Cahoon with us here. Now Bob, you have done a lot of things in life but you haven't caught a fish yet, right? I have not, no. So this no is fish. a very important check mark for you. It absolutely is. You've lived a lot of different places across both oceans. Correct, yeah. And now you're here in Arkansas, what are you doing here? Uh, working with uh, about 200 missionaries. Okay, yeah. so you are volunteering your time now. We are. You're here for how long? Three years. Three years. Yeah. Three years of volunteer service to help spread the word of the gospel. Absolutely. Now you know, uh, about half the apostles were fishermen. They sure were. So, you get, I'm not an apostle. This, there you go. <laughs> not yet, but this might help. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out were there any apostles that were golfers? <laughs> you know, I bet there, there, there definitely were. There's a lot of things you can tie in there. Okay. So, Bob is an avid golfer, and we're going to talk about some of the similarities between golf and fishing as we go through okay, the day. Very good. Okay. The first thing I'd like to do, let's talk, let's do a little casting lesson. Okay. Okay. So, what we've got right here. We've got, we've got just your, kind of your basic spinning reel. So you, can you feel a little bit yeah, of the whipping action absolutely. there? Yeah. Okay. A little, little like a driver. Okay, a little like a driver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that would be like a stiff action. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so just for comparison, I want you to take this, which is our uh, little light that we use to run on the boat at night, uh, and do the same thing. A little, little, little rigid. A little rigid, yeah, little yes, rigid. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what, we, what we're doing is this rod, when it flexes, it does two things for you okay. as a fisherman. Part one is when you're casting, it gives you that whipping action, which allows you to cast it farther. further. Yeah. Part two, this is the important part, when you actually hook onto a fish, that flex allows that hook to stay in the fish's mouth. Gotcha. Because otherwise, yeah. if it was stiff like that, okay. you wouldn't be able to keep the pressure applied on the fish, and the fish could just okay. spit it out, or it'd be a lot more able to do that. Very good. Okay. So we're going to cast with that and not okay. that. Okay. All right. Very good. And so what we'll do now is we're going to rig you up with a minnow. Okay. All right. Put your finger okay. on the line okay. like this. Yep. And then now that you've got that line secure, we flip the bale. Just for grins, let go with your finger and see what happens. That'll drop. There, so it drops like that. So that's okay. what we're doing. Okay. And so we'll reel that up, and then you and then you kind of bring it up to where the the line is at its closest point to the rod. That's the easiest way to grab it with your finger. Okay. And let her go. Just like that. Flip oh yeah. And then yeah, close the bale now, and now okay. you can retrieve as soon as a fish grabs okay. it. Okay. Gotcha. So what you do is you're watching that bobber. bobber. Yep. And, and a couple of things will happen. If the minnow starts to get a little nervous, you, the bobber will move a little bit. And that's a good sign because okay. if the minnow's nervous, He's got that, coming that at means him. there's a predator coming. When the bobber gets pulled all the way under the water, now yeah. it's game on. And then you set the hook. And just set the hook is all you do is you just take that fishing rod and move it, just get it to 12 o'clock. Okay. Just like that. All right. All right. You bet. We had a few casts, but not too many before Bob Cahoon put his minnow in a great spot and was ready. And that's coming up next on Live Bait. A little bit of movement right there.
We will feature a lot of your photos throughout this season. Send them in to fishphotos at livebaittv.com. We love sharing our love of fishing with newcomers to the sport. Bob Cahoon is an avid golfer who is about to become an avid angler. Let's get back now to First Fish. Okay, so here we're gonna try something else. Okay. Bring the rod tip down, like almost like you're pointing it at the bait, and then reel up the slack. Gotcha. And then just, gotcha. then just move it. You just want that bobber to come towards you about a foot. And what that does, look at there, see that? Okay, there you go. Ah, look here, keep reeling. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> all right, okay, <laughs> all right, okay. We got yes. us a world-class crappie right there. <laughs> Okay, hey. congratulations, thank man. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you are yeah, a fisherman. You, yeah, you. you just you're, like what? the apostles of old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I'll say. That's world class right there. That is there. a good sized crappie. It's the best tasting freshwater fish. This stu this stuff tastes good. Crappie tastes good. good. Beautiful. That's going to be huh? a good tasting piece of fish. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Right there. Well done, Coach. Okay, yeah. all righty. Awesome, very good. <laughs> and bring that arm straight to the camera so it looks like it's four feet. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, Look there at that, you go. it's all the that's way the from his ticket. head to that's his torso. It. That's a huge crappie. That's it, way. There you go. Seriously, yeah. you stop at one? <laughs> yeah, that's no, we, we, we got a lot of, we got a lot of mouths to feed that's tonight. That's absolutely, yeah. is, that, is, that a, is that a par or a birdie? <laughs> that's that's a, a fishy. Yeah. That's, that's a fishy, a... yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, okay. let's put another minnow on. The reason why you want to keep your rod tip down, it would be like yeah. putting yeah. the driver right behind the ball with no backswing. Right. Yeah. We're going to give that minnow one more shot and then we're going to okay. fire him. Right back over yeah, that right way. Right back over there, okay. even a little bit deeper. Okay. There you go. Look at that. Uh huh. Pull it towards you about a foot. Let's just make sure we're not hung up. It looks like we're good. Okay. Oh, oh. look at there. Oh, yeah! Look at that hook set. That was a championship <laughs> hook set right there. That was instinct. Oh, I lost him. Nope, nope no, no, there. he's still there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was instinct. You didn't need anybody to coach you on see, that. See that? Yeah. That's a little wimpy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so first time is an aberration, second time's a trend. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Nice pose. Just a little six inch. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, look at there. <laughs> Man, he didn't waste any time. <laughs> Ooh. Twitch on the bobber and boom. There's another crappie. Uh huh. Look at him. Oh, he's still good size. We got there us an go. angler here. So once is an aberration, twice is a trend, three is a pattern. <laughs> Bob's on the pattern. We've got crappie, we've got dinner, and we got a new angler. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Bob is a new angler who now knows what it means when you fish with certified Arkansas bait. It helps you catch fish. Let's now take a look at one of the fish farming families who make the magic happen. All right, this is exciting. We've got Jim Pillow here, who's the owner of Pillow Fish Farms, and you have a very unique position because you are the third generation in of a five-generation legacy here in Paragould, Arkansas. Your grandfather started this. Yes, he did, uh, back in 1962. Good deal. And what got him started? What, what made this happen? Okay, he had a little 40-acre row crop farm, raised cotton, beans, but my dad worked at uh, another local fish farm. And he really got interested in it. He had worked there two or three years, but he he seen then that it's something that he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So him and my grandpa got together and uh, they built some little quarter acre ponds, started mm -hmm. raising bait, golden uh -huh. shiners. Okay. And uh, that's where it started. You know, one of the interesting things about all of this is the the ingenuity and the innovation that has to take place because I'm guessing your dad and your granddad didn't go to the library and find a textbook. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there's a lot of it just, uh, you know, they had a little, just a very little bit of knowledge and then the rest of what we learn as we went. Yeah. You know, it, uh, like I say, we've really been blessed and it's grown and uh, 
feel like that's just what we were meant to do. Mm -hmm. Raise raise bait, raise fish. So you got the next generation in, right. and the next generation, you've got grandchildren right. that are out here on this farm. Yeah, they're young, yeah. but they're out here. Yeah, they're learning and how to do it. The oldest ones are. When Live Bait returns, we'll take you back up to Paragould, Arkansas to see what generations of ingenuity have produced. We will feature a lot of your photos throughout this season. Send them in to fishphotos at livebaittv.com. The alternative to certified Arkansas bait fish is wild caught bait. Now when you use wild caught bait, you're doing several things and none of them are good. The first thing is, is if there is any disease in the waterway where the wild caught bait came from, you're now transferring that into the water that you like to fish. You can also transfer invasive species and you destroy the forage in the original lake. All of those bad outcomes are eliminated when you use certified Arkansas bait fish. Disease free, healthy, hardy, and safe. That's why you need to ask for it wherever you buy bait. Let's go back to the people who grow the bait that help you catch more fish. All right, we got Chris Harden here, who's the shed manager here at Pillowfish Farms in Paragould, Arkansas. And we are overlooking one of many ponds. We got how many acres here total? Roughly 1,600. Okay, mm -hmm. and so divide it up, what's an average size? Average size growing pond is, you know, we call it 10 acres, but it's really about eight acres of water, okay. a couple acres of levee, um, and then our holding ponds, little quarter acre ponds. A lot of folks don't realize that from an Arkansas economic development standpoint, there are a lot more employees per acre on a fish farm than on rice farms or row crop farms. Yes, it takes a lot of hands. It's, it's mostly for the most part 80 percent manual work it's it's loading buckets it's you know you need help uh, as far as machines go we just it's not how it, you know how it works it's, it just works better if you have labor hands that you know can get get things done so that's why most of the guys that you see working on these fish farms are are buff yeah <laughs> yeah it takes you know it's it's a bucket of water and fish that weighs about 40 pounds by the time you get it full and then them catfish you know it's you know, that's a 200 pound dip net you're doing just over and over and it's just constantly, every day dipping, loading, picking up, carrying it. So it, it, it keeps you in shape, definitely. That's right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> good healthy work. All right, Chris, we're here in the hatchery. This is where this all begins. Yes, sir, this is our mats, spawning mats is what we call them. We take these out to the pond and we'll set, it's basically like our fake grass. We'll drain the pond down a little bit so they can't lay their eggs in the grass and we catch them all. Mm -hmm. So this is basically our makeshift grass. It, uh, they, the shiners, the goldfish, they'll get up on here and lay their eggs. We'll usually leave them about 12 hours, you know, overnight. Um, and then we'll go get them depending on what they look like if they're ready. So we'll load them up, bring them to the, the shed and we'll wash them out because they get a little muddy. The mm -hmm. shiners coming up, water, mud. Um, and then once we get them washed, we put them here in these tubs and then we'll treat them with formaldehyde for three days mm -hmm. to keep them fungus free. And then seven days later, we'll haul them back. How many eggs are gonna come through on a spawning season? Oh man, the, the egg count is what, I do, we do it by like, I guess head count would mm -hmm. be like, you know, 150 million. Wow head of shine that'd be on shiners now mm -hmm. goldfish is a little different but like 150 million head of shiners we need to hatch off what's fascinating to me about this whole process is how there was there's no textbook when this all started right. you know when the pillows started this <laughs> you just kind of figured things out and you learned by trying yes and uh, but you know to get to the point where now we say we got to have 150 million head of shiners right. to be able to make this go and then all of the processes along the way to get the bait to the bait shop all over the country it is a lot of innovation. It's a lot of just trial and error, and I missed out on that part. I kind of got the, the easier route. You know, they've already tried this, didn't work, try this, didn't work. Um, and that kind of started with Jim and his dad mm -hmm. and their family. Um, and they took a few pointers from Cold Stream, but as far as, you know, getting your farm the way you need it, that's all trial and error. Yeah. So we've got a little easier being the next generation that 
they've already trial and errored enough that maybe we can skip some of that. Good. So. Yeah, well, it's a it's a great story of American entrepreneurship to be able to just make things happen. Yes, yes, just getting after it and you know got to make a living. So. And we've got a little segment on the show called First Fish, where okay. we where we get people catching their first ever fish on camera, and they're using these minnows, mm -hmm. and the joy that we have been able to see uh, when the first one you get that magic <laughs> yeah. tug on the line yeah. and the mystery of what's on the other end uh -huh. but then the photos of those kids and and adults that have caught their first ever fish on one of your minnows that's you know, it, it, oh, it stays it, with you yeah like I say it's a small industry but we're proud of what we do mm -hmm. 90 percent of all the farm raised bait that you see all over the country comes out of three counties in arkansas and it's guys like this that are making the magic happen Thank you very much. Thank you all. all Appreciate right. it. Go fishing. Yes, yes. <laughs> Amen. When Live Bait returns, we'll give you some tips on using your minnows, and you'll see an artist's touch on some amazing lifelike woodwork. We will feature a lot of your photos throughout this season. Send them in to fishphotos at livebaittv.com. We had over 7 million new anglers join the sport of fishing last year. We welcome you to the sport and the thrills of catching a fish. Along with those thrills comes a lifestyle that we think is great. And with that lifestyle comes the artistry of the sport, captured beautifully and permanently by Danny Harris, an artist with a sculptor's touch. You know, one of the things we talk about is when you get involved with the outdoors, it becomes a lifestyle. And part of that lifestyle is the artistry of the outdoors. We've got Danny Harris here with us. Now, Danny, you have put some beautiful pieces of art together to really commemorate your time in the outdoors as well. And this is all made out of wood. Uh, and it's really kind of a reflection of your love of the outdoors. Yeah, it is. Uh, I've been an avid hunter and fisherman all my life. and. Uh, I, I'm also been an artist all my life. I've drawn and paint, um, and I just got into wood carving last December. Very lifelike. Uh, and this was modeled after a fish you actually yeah, caught. Yeah, it was some I've taken photos of. Uh, we had been crappie fishing. Me and a buddy of mine been crappie fishing, and uh, I took a few close-ups of it. And, and it was, you know, I've seen thousands of crappie, but and I've drawn and painted them, but I just needed some for this. So uh, this is where I started with it. So that's fish number one. Fish number one. All right. The colors on this is just, I mean, it's just amazing the, you know, the, the colors on a beautiful rainbow trout that we've got lots of in Arkansas. Um, just amazing. And then that largemouth bass, I mean, that's a tournament fish right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first carving took him 80 hours to complete, but with practice, he's got it down to 40 hours each. When we see the close-ups of this, you can really appreciate the detail of the individual scales and, and, and just looking at the texturing here mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the rainbow trout. I mean, this, this took some time to get it just right. The scales are done by burning. I have a wood burner that has a special scale tip. Uh -huh. uh, and, and going back to competition, when you're in like a world event, they get technical on it. They, I mean, there's a certain number of scales from the lateral line to the top of the back that they'll count. Wow. There's a, you know, a certain number of scales from the front to back, and, and they'll count them uh -huh. to see if they're right. They'll measure. They'll make measurements. So they're they're pretty picky on the, mm -hmm. on the so it's time consuming. What's next with this? I mean, for people who are seeing this, there's no doubt going to be some people who say. I want to get one of those. Is there a way that people are going to be able to buy these? Are you going to keep these to yourself or uh, <laughs> what, what's next? Well, I'm going to keep some right now uh, just to get up enough to do a show with or do some shows with. And then uh, probably starting in 2022, I'll start selling mm -hmm. some pieces. Uh, but I have a Facebook page and then I have a YouTube channel that I, that I started. Um, and I probably will start selling after the first of the year. Uh, right now, I have no plans to sell any till then mm -hmm. uh, because I want to get enough down, done to maybe do some shows. Well, this everybody's got a way they contribute. Yeah. 
And, and you've got, as you mentioned, some God-given talents to be able to do this, and this helps bring the beauty of the outdoors uh, into a, a way that other people can appreciate them when they're not outside. They can look yeah. at this inside, it reminds them of when they're outside. But this is part of the artistry of the outdoors, and which is a key component to all of us who love being outside, and we appreciate you sharing your talents with us. Find Danny on YouTube and Facebook, and one day soon you might be able to bring one of his masterpieces into your home. Now let's get some quick tips from our friends at the Game and Fish Commission on how to keep your bait healthy and hearty. Hi, my name is Jason Miller. I'm the manager of the Joe Hogan State Fish Hatchery in Lone Oak. I've uh, been fishing my entire life. I love to fish. It's how I relax, but more importantly, I like to fish because I like to eat fish. I'm going to tell you a few things that hopefully will help you keep your bait alive. Not only alive, but let's keep those bait as healthy as we possibly can. The stronger the bait are, the better chances you've got of catching those fish that you're targeting. So one of the first things that we do when we, when we buy uh, bait from a certified bait dealer, you're probably going to get bait uh, similar to this. You may not get this many this is a lot of bait uh, but you're gonna get bait in a bag uh, most of the time so one of the things that we want to try to limit is we want to limit uh, the exposure to heat so setting this on a concrete on a hot day or something like that is not a good idea putting them in the back of the truck and getting to your destination is probably not the best way to do that you want to try to haul these things as climate controlled as possible uh, I recommend putting them inside an ice chest with no water and maybe take some frozen water bottles that way you can kind of cool those fish down while they're in transit but a lot of people are just using and whatever they've got. This is a paint bucket and it's got a, a, a bubbler on it. These little battery operated bubblers are great uh, for oxygenating the water over the course of the day. Uh, but the problem with that is if you take lake water and then dump the fish straight on the lake water, then you've shocked those fish with different water chemistry, different temperature and different water quality. So one of the things we want to do is we want to get the fish in this bucket and then slowly acclimate those fish to the uh, water chemistry and the temperature of the lake. So tempering, that's a phrase that we use for, for doing that. We want to do that as, as practice, practically as we can. We don't want to spend all day tempering the fish, but it's definitely something we want to do to minimize the stress. If we're using dip nets to get the fish out of the bucket, try not to get 20 20 or 30 fish every single time that we're dipping out. If we only need one or two, then try to just catch one or two because every time that we do that, we're knocking the slime coat off the fish and that's a big stressor. So if, if we're holding fish for a long period of time, let's say overnight or we may be fishing for a couple of days, changing that water is really, really important. But then when you start doing that as well, you want to look at maybe using some additives. There's a lot of products out there that you can get at uh, fishers, retailers, uh, aquaculture supply stores that are really good for maintaining the slime coat on the fish and reducing stress. If you don't have access to something like this, I'm sure you've got access to salt. Um, and as long as it's non-iodized, doesn't have any additives, kosher salt's really good. Most people have kosher salt in their house. That's a great way to maintain uh, your uh, slime coat on your fish and reduce stress on them. It doesn't take a lot. So that's something that you can keep with you, keep in your boat, keep in a tackle box. Um, only a couple of teaspoons per every gallon of water is a good way to uh, reduce the stress on the fish. So that's just a, that's a few tips that I've got for uh, trying to keep your fish healthy. I hope that, uh, I hope that you can use some of these and uh, good luck and see you on the water. We hope you enjoyed this look at the basics of our sport, a hook, a minnow, and a lot of great fishing. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Live Bait.